Utah cops haunted by mysterious circumstances that led to unexplained wreck. Being a police officer can often be a tireless, grueling career, and these days cops don't usually get the recognition they deserve. These heroes in uniform spend their days dealing with the most despicable, violent members of society, but every so often there are those rare moments that are a little more rewarding. The following story may be hard to believe and the police officers involved understand if you have your doubts. They were the first ones to question what really happened on March 7, 2015. Yet with no other explanation, they've all agreed that something beyond their control went down that day. Over the past decade with the Spanish Fork Police Department, Officer Tyler Benos has had countless memories that left an impression on him. His normally quiet hometown of Spanish Fork, Utah, while quiet on the outside, has seen its share of unusual occurrences. Yet, like many of men and women in his line of duty, some unforgettable experiences have stuck with him a lot longer than others. For this cop, March 7, 2015 will always be a day on the job that Bettos, along with his three fellow officers, will never be able to forget. However, there was no indication that this particular day would be any more unusual than the day that preceded it. In fact, when they got the call, it seemed like it was going to be a pretty routine Saturday on the job. A local fisherman had been enjoying a nice Saturday off from work, throwing his line into the Spanish Fork River, which flows about 20 miles through the town and into Utah Lake. Suddenly, the fisherman came across something rather unusual. Underneath a small crossing bridge, he noticed a car half submerged in the water. At first, the fisherman saw no cause for alarm. No one was screaming or yelling for help. He figured somebody had probably been up to no good and abandoned their car by the riverbank. Still, as an upstanding member of the community, he wanted to keep the river clean. He decided to report it to local police. The call came in around 12.45 p.m. Officer Brian DeWitt was patrolling nearby and the first officer to arrive on the scene. It looked exactly like the fisherman had described, an overturned red Dodge sedan that had either been abandoned or crashed down from the road above and overturned itself on the way down. DeWitt went over to question the witness and noticed something strange. There was a person's arm visible through the driver's seat window. He knew he was now looking at a car crash, not trash. Thankfully, officers Tyler Beddoes, Jared Warner, and Jason Harward arrived at the scene a few moments later. Clearly, he now needed backup. The Spanish Fork Police Squad made their way closer to the wreckage to The Spanish Fork Police Squad made their way closer to the wreckage together to see if there were any survivors. It was a chilly day and the rushing river's temperature was just about 40 degrees, but they didn't hesitate to jump in and get a closer look. That's when all four of the men heard a woman cry out for help. We could see a person in the front seat and then we heard a voice saying, help me, we're in here. It was clear as day, Beddoes told New York Daily News. The first responders were relieved that they had arrived in time. We replied back, hang in there, we're trying what we can, Beddoes continued. The woman's cry gave the cops a rush of adrenaline to work harder and faster to get through the river to reach the flipped car. They knew they had to get her out before the vehicle completely filled with water. The officers had no idea how long the woman had been in there or what her condition was, and nothing could have prepared them for the truth when they finally saw her up close. When the officers finally reached the Red Dodge, their feelings of hope were immediately replaced with feelings of dread. As they struggled to flip the overturned vehicle, it became clear that they had gotten there too late. The drivers could not have been the one who called out to let the officers know she and her daughter were inside. She didn't survive the crash and had been dead for hours before they arrived. Yet when the brave officers looked in the back seat, they realized there was still hope. The deceased woman had not been traveling alone. A tiny toddler was hanging upside down in her car seat. She was blue from the freezing temperatures and unable to respond but they could see she was alive. We could see her eyes fluttering, so there was some life, but as far as movements or consciousness, there was nothing we could see, Beddoes told the Daily News. Three local firefighters had now joined the four officers, so they had enough manpower to form an assembly line and transport the baby back to shore. The first responders rushed to perform CPR. By a true miracle, the little girl regained consciousness in a Salt Lake City hospital and would survive the devastating incident. She was 18-month-old Lily Grosbeck, and she'd been traveling with her mother, 25-year-old Jennifer Grosbeck, who lost control of the vehicle around 10.30 p.m. the night before. 
The young mother had been driving her daughter home through Spanish Fork from her parents' house in Salem, Utah, when she hit a cement barrier and drove off the roadway. The car tumbled down under the overpass and landed upside down. Coroners concluded that Jennifer died immediately in the crash. Yet, because the accident wasn't visible from the road above, baby Lily had been trapped upside down in the car for more than 14 hours before she was pulled to safety. It's miraculous that the child was able to survive, Spanish Fork Police Lieutenant Matt Johnson told The Post. Authorities concluded Lily was able to survive because of the way her mom's car landed. The responding officers, however, think it might have been something else. We've gotten together and just talking about it and all four of us can swear we heard somebody inside the car saying help officer jared warner recalled to ksl the only people in there were the deceased mother and the child added to it and the cries definitely couldn't have come from lily luckily warner's body camera was switched on and added further proof that the four officers hadn't been hallucinating before we made the decision to turn it over we heard somebody say help me you can hear a sound in the video, but it's hard to make it out. But you definitely hear some noise and you hear us respond to it, said Warner. And we would not have responded to it in the way we did if we thought it was coming from outside of the vicinity we were in. As for Jennifer Grosbeck, her sister, Jill Sanderson, says she was an amazing mother who would have done anything to save Lily. Her baby was the love of her life, she said. She was very compassionate and a very loving person and always willing to bend over backwards for her loved ones. Clearly, baby Lily had some sort of guardian angel watching over her that day. Could it have been her mother? Officer Tyler Beddoes seems to think so. I don't know what I thought I heard, he said after the chilling rescue. I'm not a typically religious guy. It's hard to explain. It was definitely something. Where and why it came from, I'm not sure. In 2016, Beddoes co-authored the book, Proof of Angels, detailing the unexplainable voice and miraculous rescue he and his fellow officers experienced that day. Please share this video with your friends below.